We're, we're here today with Jerry Moffat, who needs no introduction. Um, Jerry's one of the leading climbers this, this country's ever seen, and he is the author with Niall Grimes of his autobiography, Revelations, which is Vertebrates best-selling climbing book by, by quite a long way. Quick question, Jerry, what was your motivation for writing that book? A lot of it was just to document the time and the era, put something back into climbing, and so the, the new generation of climbers, what it was like when we were climbing. Um, obviously, the sport was very different then. There was no professional climbers. Uh, there was no internet. Um, People had no money, so the the whole sport was really different. There was no climbing competitions. Bouldering wasn't documented. It was a different era, so I wanted to just document it, and you know, for for the younger climbers, really. That that's interesting. I think that that giving back thing is a is a theme we've always seen at Vertebrate. The we work with a lot of climbers, and because it's a lifestyle more than a sport, we found many top climbers like yourselves have, have put a lot of time and effort into helping other people and developing other talent and uh, but I've o- often wondered with people at the very top of the game whether they just held a little bit back in advice uh, so they could keep their competitive edge but with your most recent book Mastermind which talks about the psychology of climbing and the psychology of sport are you actually finally revealing what gave you that competitive edge? Yes, I, yes. I think a, a lot of things. When I was competing, you wouldn't say all the different things that you that you're doing. Um, with Mastermind in particular, I wanted to document and get all. I thought if I can get all the best climbers in the world together, interview them and ask them what they were thinking. I thought that would make an amazing book. So, for instance, if I could speak to Adam Andre and say, "What do you think about?" just before you're about to do the hardest climb you've ever done what, what what are your thoughts why do you think you're successful and you know i've got all the best climbers from all the different genres of climbing from you know on site red point bouldering solo I interviewed all the best uh people and documented that into a book um to make it completely comprehensive uh along with um the factual research from different professors, and I, I researched and read a lot of books. So a lot of the stuff in that book would have helped me massively when I was climbing. So I learned oh, loads, loads, loads more. So I, I, my climbing 100% would have been better if I'd read that book when I was climbing. I did read on sports psychology and I did read books, but not as comprehensive as, as Mastermind. You were quite um, renowned uh, for... Doing routes first, red point. So you 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 know you find a route, you whether it was a new route or, or an established route, you'd work the route, and you were very good at once you'd got the the route worked, not having a mental block, not having any sort of issues, and getting these things first, red point. What what in mastermind is going to tell us how we can we can sort of be able to do hard climbing efficiently like that? Well, I think one of the things is I did do I did do very well in that. But I also did make mistakes, and I also blew it. And one of the things you have to realise is that even if you, even the great climbers make big mistakes, it was interesting when I spoke to Chris Sharma, he proudly told me, I've I've bottled it loads of times. I've blown it loads of times. So all the good climbers do that. So I would say one of the most important things is to be not optimistic, but to be pessimistic. So don't go there thinking, yeah, this is all going to go swimmingly brilliant and I'm just going to do it first go. You have to think about all the things that are going to go wrong in advance of actually going to the route. So when you're standing at the bottom of the route tying on just about to climb, then you could be optimistic. But in the weeks before then, you can be pessimistic, work on all the things and have it in your head. What am I going to do if that goes wrong? What am I going to do if that goes wrong? Be ready for everything to get yourself into an optimistic state when you're actually just about to climb, Good. which 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 is interesting, because an optimist would just think, oh, I'm not going to bother to do any psychology, I'm gonna, just going to wing it, I'm going to go there, I'm going to do it first go. They fall off, come down and go, well, I'll just do it next go because I'm optimistic. So you're best off being sort of more pessimistic, which is an interesting thing. And you see that in, in other sports as well, 
it's particularly in fell running, you see people who are very good at suffering because they they know they're going to suffer. They know they're going to suffer. If you if if you go out there and, and you think, well, I'm just not going to get stitched because I've not had stitched for a year, you're going to have problems. But if you think, right, I'm going to have stitch in the first ten minutes, what am I going to do? You can go back and if you keep a journal or a diary or something like that, you you, you just go, oh, wait, I remember that race. I had stitch and I pulled through it, and actually I got my I got my personal best. So that's why in the book there's lots of things in there to help you reinforce things. So it's good for have for things to go wrong in your climbing because things might go, you know, good from that. We have recently published a book called Crack Climbing by Pete Whitaker, and I know Pete has contributed to the Mastermind book, and indeed you have contributed to um, the Crack Climbing book. Can you tell us a little bit about you know what what Pete what Pete's revealed about his his motivations? Yeah, Pete was for me he's a, a world best crack climber, but also he's an amazing trail climber. He's a proper proper climber, more from my generation. And uh, one of the things I asked him about was how he visualizes stuff, and he put a very very strong thing uh, in Masterman about how he visualise uh, things so you know, I've done a lot of research on how you're supposed to visualise stuff but then you, I wanted other climbers to say look I do it that way as well and Pete did it absolutely comprehensively um, and uh, he, he wrote a very very strong piece in and how he visualises things before he goes up on something and actually he said when he visualises he visualises it all going wrong and from that starts to work on things how can go you know how they can go right especially for difficult trail climbs where uh, the consequences of fall of a fall are, are bad let's say <laughs> that is a reoccurring theme that we've seen for you know from a number of top climbers people like you know Andy Kirkpatrick always always gives that advice saying something's going to go wrong and you need to know how to deal with it yes. so, so it's interesting it's, you know sort of big wall Climbers, mountaineers, you know, right, right down to rock, you know, right down to rock climbers. It's yes. not patronising. <laughs> yeah, uh, are all saying the same thing. Is is there any other themes that has co- that came out of, of of writing Mastermind that all a, a lot of top athletes were doing? All the top tennis players, all the top footballers, all of them, they all sort of think and, and prepare themselves mentally in the same way, and it's 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 getting things boiling down really to thinking about nothing just being in the moment um, and being happy so you want to be happy you want to be in the moment you want to have all the all the stuff pushed way 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 in in the background because you've been thinking about this thing for a long time and all the things that could go wrong but to perform really really well you want to be in the moment and happy and really thinking about nothing which is incredibly hard to do it's say you you know you it's, it's your last day in France you've been there for a month working on your project uh, you fell off the last move three days ago you cut your finger your fingers healed you have to go back the next day it's in the shade for one hour and you've got one go it's very hard to think about nothing and just go yeah let's just go and do it you know so it's all about getting yourself ready for that ready for that time how d- does the book talk about dealing with failure and, and dealing with a lack of success with climbing when you've you know you built yourself up? This is part of dealing with failure and the f- the fear of failure. So one of the one of the things which is a, a real pressure point is the fear of failure before you start the climb. The fear of looking stupid in front of other people, let's say in a competition. So it's the fear of failure that can that can hold you back. Um, but I mean, with climbing, you, unless it's competitions, you always, you always get another go. But the, the, one of the, one of the biggest things is you, you need that pressure and you need that fear. And fear is the biggest driver. It's the biggest thing. Adrenaline and fear are really, really, really important for a really good for a really good performance. You need pressure and you need fear. Without that, you're not going to perform as well as as well as you could. But fear and pressure can work the other way and, it, and if it, it can flip you and make you make you not do well so it's harnessing that and knowing what to do with it at, at the start of the interview you talked about motivation and 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 drive and and this week we've had the the, the, the heartbreaking really sad news about Andy Pollock 
Andy Pollock, I guess, was your first climbing partner back back in those sort of early teenage years. Clearly, you were feeding off each other, and you were just lo- you know it comes out in Andy's book, it comes out in your book, just loving you climbing. That must have been bad news, bad news for you, because that's that's where your climbing began, really. With that. yes, it, it was very sad. I met Andy uh, when I was sixteen years old um, at a cliff called Greggy Fallin near Landudno. Um and I started climbing then. He was always really ambitious, and back then, uh, in the late seventies, they had a little climbing wall in their in their school. So Andy went on that climbing wall. So he got really strong very quickly. But Andy was always a lot more ambitious than me. Uh, I think one of our biggest climbs back then was uh, doing the third, first ascent of Mayfair on Pentruin, and Andy kept going on about this new route, and it would definitely go. Will go down there and do it with him? And he kept going, come on, it will definitely, definitely go. And I was thinking, when he, when he was saying how it will definitely go, I thought it might be the Harvey S or something like that. And I, Andy hitched over from Prostatin, which must have taken him about two or three hours. I cycled down, because I had the afternoon off school, um, completely illegal, I would have been in big trouble if I'd done it. But I cycled down and met him and looked at this wall and I went, are you completely nuts? I just saw this blank wall an old head route with these bolts on it without a single hold on it and then I beeled Andy and after about an hour he did the thing or maybe even longer than that but he was super ambitious and that was you know really the start of climbing on Pentruid but Andy was always he would always try routes which were way too hard for him and he dragged me on those routes so he was he was a lot more ambitious than I was I think some of the best bits of of, of your book and, and his book were you know that you just each of you talking about how how amazing it was discovering climbing and, and rattling through the grades and, and really enjoying yeah, it. Yeah, because we, we're just so young and we, you'd just be talking, going, oh, I wonder if you're the best 16 year olds in the country uh, and things like that. And we're ambitious and we wanted to be like our heroes, which were, you know, Pete Livesey and Ron Fawcett. We wanted to be professional climbers and we looked up to them and we were just, everything's new and you've not actually done anything yet, but it's your whole life's in front of you and you're thinking, what am I going to do with it? And you're thinking, I want to. I want to travel and climb like you know, like my heroes. So it's an exciting time for us. 